What is up, guys? Welcome back to another walking on water tutorial from my garage. No, we were actually just out on the water and we spent a couple hours out there making this tutorial, cruising around. It's a 29 degree day, so it's pretty cold. Got back, started uploading a little bit of the footage and guess what, no audio. So we're in the garage today, but we're still gonna get it done. This is very valuable information and this is one of my tried and true go-getter killer spring Chinook setup. So let's get right into it on how to set it up. You guys are not gonna wanna miss this one. All right guys, so first things first, we have a non-slip mooching rig. These two hooks right here, one above each other, and it not sliding up and down the line is a mooching rig, a non-slip mooching rig, and this one is set up for coon shrimp. So I have a one finger gap in between the hooks, just like so. If you wanna learn how to tie up this setup, the non-slip mooching rig, go over to my channel, Walking on Water, look for the video, how to tie up a non-slip mooching rig, watch that video, and you'll be a master at tying these up in no time, okay guys? So super simple, one finger gap. I have two Mustad 3 aught hooks. I love Mustad hooks. And then as well, I have a 30 pound mono leader right here, okay? Super simple, super easy. Let's get right into the setup. Okay, now we have beads. I have five six millimeter chartreuse beads. We're just gonna feed them down the line. Just like so. All right guys, so I got the five six millimeter beads down the line, super simple, super easy. Now, when you're down in a very congested combat fishing-esque type water system where people, there's tons of people out there fishing for spring, um, spring Chinook, a lot of times they're gonna be running 3.5 blades just like some of these right here, okay? 3.5 spinner blades. They're a go-to for spring Chinook and a lot of people just absolutely love to run them. But on a day where there's an overcrowding um, of 3.5 spinner blades in front of those spring Chinook's faces, I like to change things up just a little bit. A lot of people either go more dramatic with their presentation or they go a little bit more subtle with their presentation. And so for me, I like to run for springers a little bit of a subtle presentation, a smaller presentation, one that's not gonna thump as much in the water and so on and so forth. And it separates you from the pack just a little bit that might entice those fish to bite your hook. So what I'm gonna throw on here, in, which makes this setup complete, is actually a super subtle presentation and it's none other than the 1.5 Max Smiley Blade. It's a little paper blade. I like the moon jelly, I like the chartreuse, I like the pink, and you can tune this blade so it either spins slower or faster depending on how you want the presentation to look. So if you wanna bend it just a little bit, put a bend in it, it's gonna spin a little bit faster. You wanna spin a little bit slower, you just flatten it out a little bit and it's gonna spin a little bit slower for you in the water. And these things are super easy to put on. All you do is just slide it right down the line, just like so. And there you have it, guys. You just have a 1.5 Max Smiley Blade prawn rig, five chartreuse beads, and two three-aught must-add hooks on a 30-pound leader, okay? Now, with all my setups, what I do right off the bat is I tie a bead chain to the top of it, okay? As I'm tying this bead chain on with just your standard fisherman's knot, let's talk about leader length just for a second. I hear a lot of people saying this, wet your knot, hashtag wet your knot. I hear a lot of people saying 24, 24, go fast, okay? Now, 24, 24, go fast means 24, 24, go fast means 24 inch leader, 24 inch bumper, a fast trolling speed. Now, I agree that in some situations, 24, 24, go fast could be very effective. I also know, for me personally, that I don't ever run a short, as short of leader as a 24 inch leader. I love running in between 28 and 34 inch leaders with a 30 pound line, okay? I think the 28 to 34 inch leader is the sweet spot for me. Now, I love to come out here and I like to tie up multiples. So I'll have one that's 28, one that's 30, one that's 34, you know what I mean? And then I can start my day with 28 when there's a little bit low light, keeping that closer to the flasher. And then as the sun starts to rise, I can lengthen that leader up with the exact same colors and everything. So I can lengthen that leader up and get it a little bit farther back from the flasher as that flasher is moving through the water, catching a little bit of that sun ray, okay? now. 
Super simple, super easy setup. Let's get into the coon shrimp rigging on this setup so you guys can understand how to keep that coon shrimp hooked on the hook and fishing for a lot longer in the water. All right, guys, so we have a coon shrimp right here, and this is exactly how I set it up, okay? So you see the rounded part of the tail right here. A lot of people just take the hook and they stick it directly through here just like this. They stick it directly through here, whoop, right through the side, and it'll fish, right? I personally like to get two points of contact with the, th with the really thick part of the exoskeleton of this coon shrimp. And so I like to pinch the tail, always pinch the tail so you don't destroy your shrimp, okay? Right down through the top of the coon shrimp's tail, right where that bevel is, and then pull it down as you pinch, just like so. So you have two points of contact on that coon shrimp, and then you have your mooching rig, your, your trailer hook right there. That, and this is also, guys, this is also why we do a one finger gap. You do a one finger gap so the trail hook is right at the nose of that coon shrimp. And even the hairs of that coon shrimp are sticking out just a little bit beyond the hook. So when that Chinook comes up and grabs it, you don't have to worry about it short striking or anything like that. Okay, so here's the setup. Just like that in its entirety, guys. Super easy, super simple setup, an absolute killer. Actually, let's roll some of the footage from last year using this setup down on the Columbia River. Let's check that out. Fish on, baby. Drano Lake, April 21st, 2023. guys as you can see that setup absolutely did work for me last year i mean day in and day out last year we were just absolutely just bonking fish on the kayak last year it was just such a fun experience i mean the whole vibe down there in the columbia river fishing like this was just a fun experience for me you know chit chatting with people you know shooting the shit and just hanging out around a bunch of like-minded people and other fishermen super cool even though i was on a kayak i'd catch a fish people would be hooping and hollering and i just absolutely loved it but a lot of people were asking me hey what are you using what are you using are you using sand what's this like what depth are you at because i was actually down there i know the kayak's stealthy but we were actually actually out fishing a lot of people down there and it was just really exciting and fun and I'm telling you it's all because these prawn rigs with the 1.5 max smiley blade now short bus 360 super series flashers are absolutely my go-to I have fished nothing but short bus ever since I picked up a couple of these super series flashers they have the double agitator fin so you control them fast you control them slow and that's where the 24 24 24 thing comes back into play again right you control these things slow and fast i've caught spring chinook going 0 0.9 miles an hour on drano lake and i've also caught spring chinook going 1.9 miles an hour you know down near wind river and beyond bonneville dam and so 24, 24, 24 is a good rule of thumb if you're just starting out, but I would always leave other options available because these things allow you to fish so many different speeds and the 1.5 max smiley blade responds well to slower speeds as well because it's a more subtle presentation. So let's get into how we set all this up just really quick so you guys can get on the water and go use this tried and true setup to absolutely crush Spring Chinook this year. All right, guys. I know it's been said a million times, but to go out there and 360 fish, you definitely want a medium heavy action rod. This is an 8.6 Lama Glass medium heavy. It's a Cascade Pro XT, and I'm not a huge Lama Glass guy. I'm more of an Okuma guy, but that's okay too. This rod's been in my family for a very long time, and it was a gift to me when I was young, so I'm not letting this thing go just because it's so dear and near to my heart. But 
a medium heavy rod, also the line counter reel, okay? You have to have a line counter reel when you're 360 fishing. I personally like to use 12 ounces of lead and we'll get into that in a second when I show you the dropper up here. But you always wanna use a line counter reel so you can replicate anywhere you were in the body of water as you were fishing, as well as a nice thick braided line. Um, I like to use 50 pound braided line. Um, there's a lot of good brands out there and so on and so forth. So that's the rod and the reel. Let's get into the actual terminal tackle down here so we can understand what we're doing, okay? <clears throat> this is a VIP line lock. This is my weight slider, right? This is what I'm gonna put my 12 ounces of weight on. So when I lower that down, now here's a little bit of a trick that I like to use. If it's 15 feet deep, I like to go to, with 12 ounces of lead on, I like to go down to about 14 feet deep. And in my mind, and I'm sure there's mathematicians out there that can tell me exactly the depth, but from my experience and the hours I've spent on the water fishing, 12 ounces of lead, 14 feet on the line counter, I'm sitting right around 14 feet deep, okay? And this is a VIP line lock, like I said. As you can see here, a lot of people, so when you're 360 fishing, bead chains are king. It prevents the line twist that you're gonna get in your line if you do not have a, um, if you're not running a bunch of bead chains. And the VIP line lock actually capitalized on that and just made by far the best weight slider and a line twist mitigator that's ever been created, honestly. So there's a slit in here. And as you can see, this is an Oregon Tackle bead chain um, scent tube. You can run just a regular bead chain as well. I like to add some scent if I'm not catching anything. I don't ever start out just running scent. Um, I fish, if nothing's happening, then I start adding scent as the day goes on. But this VIP line lock locks right into that bead chain. And so just the bead chain is spinning. And so your line's not getting any twists in it as you're fishing throughout the day with these um, short bus super series flashers, okay? Now, back to the 24-24 go fast thing. We have a 24 inch bumper. Now 24 inch bumper has always been my go-to, but just like I've heard before, if you ask 10 people, everybody likes a little bit different bumper lengths. Some people like 10 inches, some people like 13, some people run 18. I prefer to go with the 24. It's worked for me in the past. And I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I like going with the 24 and 24 has just worked very well for me. Okay guys, super simple. Grab your flasher, you know, Hook it up with your snap swivel just like that. Grab your 1.5 Max Smiley Blade prawn rig just like so and attach it to the bottom just like that. And then you're fishing, okay guys? Now, I like to run this setup at about 1.2 to 1.5 miles an hour. I think that around the 1.2 to 1.5 mile an hour, even though it has the double agitator fin, I think that's where I get the best spin on my 1.5 Max Smiley Blade setup. And this thing has just absolutely destroyed the fish, you guys. All those videos that you saw previously in this video, was last year and they were all on 1.5 Max Smiley Blades. Now, I do run the 3.5 Colorados, you know, or the Hildebrandt Blades, so on and so forth, the Brads, the Simons, all those, right? I mean, those all are very extremely effective on the water as well. This is just a tried and true setup that I love and I hope you guys enjoy it too. Make sure you guys are commenting down below. Let me know what your favorite Spring Chinook setup is. Also, Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you guys can see all the new exciting adventures coming out this year. It's gonna be super exciting. We're no longer in the kayak. We're finally into a little boat and it is gonna be a sick year full of a ton of fishing. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. This is Walking on Water. I'll catch you in the next one.